Okay, my name is Linda Dabble, Linda Fletcher Dabble, and I started doing Wikipedia eight years ago. I went to uh, a presentation, which was basically an overview or introduction to tell people how to get involved in Wikipedia. So uh, Alice Backer with uh, Afro Crowd, she started Afro Crowd. Afro Crowd is a group that promotes uh, participation by people of African descent. They do work in the United States, they do work in Africa, and they do work in the Caribbean. So I, I started with them and they were only in existence for four months. So I started in the beginning with that group. So I focus on, I do a lot of different kind of articles. Um, I've done, I do a lot of the artists and musicians in New York City and I enjoy doing them because I find artists and musicians the easiest to do. It's not a subject matter that I have to learn. So it's easy, it's pretty straightforward. I've done historical pieces. Uh, it's very diverse. I think one of my favorite pieces was Associated Negro Press, because I knew very little about Chicago. And I knew a lot of artists, young artists uh, from Chicago that migrated to New York. So I was curious. And then there was a man in the community, his grandfather, P.W. Shavers, was the first person to create a situation after the depression, after the fall of the banks, to guarantee people's money. And I was just in a casual conversation. So he told me his mother wrote a book, and I doubt if you can find it. I found the book on Amazon. <laughs> so from there, I started to really get involved in uh, Chicago history and Associated Negro Press. So I did that. I've done a lot of articles, you name it. I've done uh, New York City history. Uh, I've done uh, where African Americans were before they got to Harlem. I did, uh, that article was San Juan Hill, Manhattan. Now, that's one of my favorite pieces too, because um, I learned a lot of, of, of what was going on and um, the relationship with Lincoln Center. And when I did that article, I got a little slack, but I had to challenge the slack. And you have to have a good argument. So my good argument was, if Seneca, Con, if Seneca Village has a Wikipedia article, how come San Juan Hill cannot? And actually, San Juan Hill is where West Side Story took place. But it wasn't a love story. And I had heard about San Juan Hill from an elder in the community. And then when I found out that it wasn't an article, then I was able to dig deeper. And then when I would go to, now all of a sudden, it's a big deal in New York because that information is there. And they wanted me to be a subtitle, like a footnote to Lincoln Center. And so I learned a lot about early New York history, Robert Moses, uh, uh, Amsterdam housing, uh, how Lincoln Center built that wall up there. Because it's sort of like an old issue they don't want to deal with. So they, they have this big wall, so people can't see those projects. The projects are still there. So I would go to a lot of events around, because now all of a sudden San Juan Hill is a big issue. So maybe the article has something to do with, I would show up at events and they were shocked that somebody in the audience knew the history. I wouldn't tell them I wrote the article, but they were shocked. And it's, it's some great history. Uh, a lot of music came out of there. And it was a strong uh, cultural community there. Uh, the Charleston came out of there. A lot of off-Broadway theater came out of there. So it was some lost history. And I like finding lost history and documenting lost history. That's really my favorite. But I like artists, too, because when I get into artists, I get to listen to all their music. And then when I was doing the San Juan Hill piece, I found out about Calypso Bebop. And most of the people I talked to that do bebop didn't know such a thing existed. So uh, then I've been educating a lot of Caribbeans about uh, their early history, because a lot of them came here in the 70s and the 80s. But these were the Caribbeans that came here uh, 1917, 1918, 1919. So uh, during the lockdown, I. I started to do some Zoom sessions to help get other editors involved. And we started off with five. And I ended up having just one and a half people that, one person she does when she comes, but she does a lot. But we keep her involved. So we did a lot of articles during the lockdown. We did a lot of work during the lockdown. I mean, the person was able to actually survive information overload, but I, I do it gently. And uh, I know a lot of people don't like, I don't think everybody's going to want to do articles. So we did some, we did some, oh, for Afro Crowd, they asked me to do something around Juneteenth. 
So I started looking for what I can find around Juneteenth because most of the narrative around Juneteenth was, oh, those were the people in Texas that found, found out late that they were free, right? So that's, that's the narrative. That, that's the general narrative that comes from the media. So I ran into this woman named, uh, online, uh, Andrea Roberts, and she wrote something about freedom colonies. And I says, wow, this is a whole nother narrative. After emancipation, they actually created 500 uh, settlements, 500 communities, and that's the kind of work that she does. She might be a good person to connect with Wikipedia. And I, what I did was I did her article. I did her Wikipedia article. And this woman gets, she has a lot of citations. A lot of people have written about her. But most of what has been written about her is in the field that she's in. I mean, just tons of stuff. But outside of that academic world, nobody has really written about her. So uh, I found her work extremely fascinating. I want to connect with her some more. Um, and what we did, we learned so much about early communities because sometimes we, we do the article, so we actually create a Wikipedia book, and we call it, we call it the, the Juneteenth Reader. <laughs> and we were focusing on different type of communities, and we were really fascinated by Galveston, Texas, and th like that's another narrative for Juneteenth. And then I even went to some Juneteenth events, and we partnered with another group, and we did some, we did some events there, yes. Can you say something about why you do this, your opinions on lifelong learning, and something about your research process? Um, I guess because when I was in college, I studied a lot of uh, anthropology. So I'm used to collecting information and letting the information tell the story. And one of the things I emphasize on my Zoom sessions is be comfortable not knowing. You know, our educational system, we, they expect you to know before you are even taught. You know, and just because a person does not know something, that does not mean that they're stupid. So I want people to feel very comfortable not knowing. And when we start on a piece, nobody knows anything. So be comfortable not knowing. And we did a lot of work uh, during the lockdown on crypt the crypto space, cryptocurrency. And that, that was huge. That took a whole lot of time. That's one of those pieces where you're dealing with a field that you don't know anything about. So that was quite challenging. And I think me and Carmen, we spent over a year on that. And most people spend about a year just, just doing the work. So um, I did one on Arthur Banks. No, Arthur Hayes. Um, he got fined by, uh, by the government for... Uh, it, it was really with the details and everything. What happened was people were using his crypto exchange, even though he was working outside the country. They were using a VPN number. So he gets fined $100 million. So we learned a lot. It, it was so much information, and it was a field we didn't know. So that was another opportunity to create a Wikipedia book relating to a Wikipedia article. So that, that was fun. Who were you editing this with? What was that? Who were you editing this with? Who is this commu this online community? Was this Afrocrowd? Afrocrowd. I see. Yeah. Can you say something about lifelong learning? You were telling me about that. Yeah, I think I just realized recently, because I was researching Singapore and how they're doing, they're really doing a lot of life, lifelong learning. And I said, oh, God, that's what I've been doing with, with Wikipedia. And I think that's a role that Wikipedia has to play. And, uh, and one of the things I like to do is focus on more than just article writing. That's why I did the book creator, because with the book creator, you can stimulate conversation. So I started a group in 2020, and we called it Alcabalon Wikipedia Edit and Study. So we're studying together. We're having conversations. And I think now with ChatGPT, it's still important that we have dialogue. We have constructive conversation that we go out and look for things to talk about, but we're not always feeling like, I know and you don't know, you know, to get out of that, that space. So I think that was a good thing to have. We, we have to have discussions, not like some, one person knows it and nobody else knows anything, but we can start up where nobody knows. <laughs> and we navigate and we explore.